Oh, well, thank you for the call and reminding us that that, that has happened. And uh, John is phoning us from Vancouver next with some thoughts about access to justice. John? I was thinking um, just to smooth out the uh, backlog in the family courts that we could possibly make prenuptials, even though it's not the most romantic idea, but make them mandatory. And that way um, it, it might it eliminate the, the legal process because it's all contractually um, settled to begin with. I certainly think that's one way of re- re- planning ahead with respect to potential disputes. That's not always something that uh, couples in love want to do, but uh, certainly uh, uh, I think my colleagues who practice in the family law area would generally recommend a prenuptial agreement. In recommend, order to- but he's saying it should be, we should make it mandatory. What do you think of that? Well, that's an interesting thought. Uh, um, I suspect there would be some resistance to it, but certainly if if you have an agreement ahead of time as to how to resolve a dispute, it's going to be a lot easier to resolve it. John, thank you for that uh, specific suggestion. And one BC organization that does help people without the means to hire a lawyer is Access Pro Bono. It offers more than 90 free legal advice clinics around British Columbia. Jamie McLaren is the executive director. He's with us in the studio as well. Hi, Jamie. Hi, Mark. How would you gauge the need for this kind of uh, assistance from lawyers, pro bono, free for, for the public good right now? We know the need is immense, and we're serving it every day. We have uh, 97 different clinics across British Columbia, and uh, we have wait times of up to two weeks for these clinics. So the, the need is definitely immense. This is where lawyers offer up their time free for a one-on-one to help direct you or guide you with your problem? Exactly. It's the first phase of our service, which is an advice service. So people go into a clinic, usually hosted at a community center or a courthouse or a a church, and they sit down for a half hour with a lawyer who provides them with free legal advice. We talked to to Gavin Hume a few minutes ago about lawyers' fees and uh, why they're high, but I think you are trying to do some work with law firms on bringing those down, those fees down in certain situations. It's a model we're looking at. We're, we're terming it low bono as opposed to uh, pro bono. And what it means is that law firms will, will provide a, a sliding scale of, of service fees uh, for people who can't afford their, their rack rate. And they're, they're, the idea is that they'll limit it to commercial disputes and allow for more people to, to engage their services and get into court with representation. I understand Washington State does this already, do they not? They, they have something called moderate means program? Yeah, the, the, in the United States, there's all sorts of different creative programs that, that work quite well in, in most instances. And so it's not a new concept. It's not something we'd be pioneering here in British Columbia, but we think it'd be very worthwhile. What are some other steps that you think could be taken now that, that would help the 70% of lower to, to mid-income people who can't afford to, to go through a lawyer? Well, beyond expanding the scope of legal aid and, and, and producing more funds for legal aid, which is always something we're pushing for, I think um, just more creative thinking around who provides legal services. Certainly the, the Law Society has been very forward-thinking in getting paralegals the ability to provide direct legal services, and we've engaged them in a, in a program recently here in Vancouver. Uh, Malin McKim, who is, you, you bring up legal aid, he is the president or outgoing president of the Legal Services Society. He was on our program a couple of minutes ago also talking about we need to think about things in a different way. It shouldn't be top down from the lawyers and the judges. It should be from the bottom up. What do people really need? Like, I need transportation to get to a courthouse if I'm in an isolated part of, of BC. What, what do you think of, and also putting the power in the hands of social workers and others that, that people come into contact with to help guide them? Because the, the legal system is, is such a confusing maze for many people. Right. I think the problem begs for a holistic approach with uh, all sorts of creative thinking. So we know that legal problems don't exist in isolation from other social problems. People who have legal problems need to speak to, to non-legal service providers in order to get that help as well. So we, we look to partner with different organizations, and the Law Society certainly does as well, in, in providing a, a variety of services for people. It's so big, this, this issue, and uh, there are so many different uh, intersecting networks of people. Wh- who sees the big picture? Who starts to make things happen? Well, that, that's, that's a real issue. Uh, I think it's, it's difficult to see the real picture. A lot of these people who need these legal services are essentially invisible people in the sense that they don't interact with many institutions um, until they absolutely have to, and at which point it's often too late for, for um, meaningful help. So it's, in many ways, an invisible population. We know that there are many community advocates out there on the front lines, and they see a lot of the problems, and they're able to report and, and, and suggest good, good um, initiatives. And what would you say to lawyers listening about why they might consider doing some pro bono work if they don't do it now? Oh, well, there's so many reasons to do pro bono work. One of the, the main ones is, of course, uh, giving back to the community. 
Um, we, are, as lawyers, are very privileged to practice law, and it's a, a self-regulating profession. And I think well, many people, as I do, ref, um, look upon it as a professional responsibility. But beyond that, it's good for um, developing new skills, advocacy training, uh, getting to know uh, people in your community, and uh, some business development as well. Thanks very much for this, Jamie. No problem. Jamie McLaren, Executive Director of uh, Access Pro Bono. We do have a link on our BC Almanac webpage to their organization. As he mentioned, more than 90 different clinics around British Columbia held throughout the year. This is Law Week. We have another five minutes or so to hear from our listeners, too, about access to justice and some real-world things that need to be done to to improve that for British Columbians. 669-3733-1800-825-5950 on the cell, star or pound 690. Chris calling us from Dawson Creek next. Hello, Chris. Hi there. Go ahead, please. I just wanted to call and say uh, uh, I have two uh, lawsuits on the go right now with uh, with real estate agents and... Uh, a big barrier to access to the system is definitely the cost. And I would say that's the private citizen. Um, large corporations are very organized, and they have large teams of lawyers. And uh, the, the real estate agents or building inspectors or people, people like that uh, have very low cost uh, for legal, legal counsel there. And so that is a huge barrier. Is for the private citizen, it costs a lot. I haven't even been to trial yet, and I'm well over 20000 in legal fees. 20000 and you're not in the courtroom yet? Not even in the courtroom yet. So when I heard you guys say that the average cost for two days in court is well over twenty grand, that's uh, real, uh, another eye-opener. You're not even there yet. Have, have you uh, asked for, for assistance from, from uh, legal aid or, or from uh, lawyers who may be doing some pro bono work? Uh, no, I, have, I found it very difficult to even find competent lawyers that would, that would uh, take, take a case. And uh, once you do, the lawyer's so busy that uh, it's very difficult to get his time. But I have found a very good lawyer. Uh, it's just finding his time because everybody else needs his time too. So, Gavin Hume, uh, a thought or two from you on, on Chris's predicament, and how do you find a good lawyer who has the time and one you can afford? Right. Obviously, uh, I shouldn't say obviously, we do face a problem with uh, the number of lawyers available in our more remote communities. Uh, For for whatever reason, they're they're simply not uh, populating uh, those uh, towns and and villages. So there is... Like the medical profession, I guess. Like the medical profession, we face a very similar problem. So we've been trying to encourage uh, uh, the expansion of legal services by encouraging lawyers to work in those communities. The Canadian Bar Association has a very active program underway with the young lawyers, encourage them to give thought to working in those other communities. And Thompson River University is starting a new law school uh, in the same manner that a medical school was started at the University of uh, British, uh, Northern British Columbia to encourage uh, members of our profession to stay in, uh, in, in remote communities. So that's a, a one initiative uh, that uh, is underway, or a couple of initiatives that are underway is just to encourage uh, people to work in, in those those uh, communities. Separate and apart from that, the Canadian Bar Association has a lawyer referral program and one can access that. Of course, working in a a community outside of the lower mainland and accessing a lawyer in Vancouver may have costs associated with it, so the preference is to have somebody in the community who can provide uh, that service. And that's one of the reasons why we are working on the paralegal initiative, which is to have a lawyer in a community have uh, paralegals that can provide aspects of the service that are required to get a matter to court at a lower rate. We should put a link to the Law Society because yes. through your website, people can make these connections that you're describing right now. That's correct. And if you were to come back here a year from now, what do you want to see changed? Um, I would like to see an understanding reached with both the Supreme Court and the Provincial Court, wherein paralegals can provide a service uh, under the supervision of a lawyer, uh, which would result in a cheaper uh, fee, if you will, or a lower fee to the public who needs that service. That's what I would like to see. 
Thanks for joining us here for this discussion right now. It's been my pleasure. Gavin Hume, president of the Law Society of BC and Law Day. It's happening uh, tomorrow at the Vancouver Public, Public Library, right across the street from us here at CBC on Georgia Street. Events begin 9.30 in the morning. There is a public forum right here at the CBC in downtown Vancouver at noon. It'll be hosted by my colleague from CBC Television, Ian Hanna-Mansing, who has a real expertise in legal matters. And you'll have a chance to ask questions to a panel of senior legal representatives. We have judges from all levels of the courts and uh, police on hand as well. That's noon to uh, 1.30 tomorrow here at the CBC Broadcast Centre at 700 Hamilton Street.